We talk about this big experiment, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Leif Salford from Lund University in Sweden. Oh, Lund, yeah, Professor yeah. Um, oh, Salford, yeah, from Lund, yeah. But he the, said in, in 2003 when he came out with the results about the blood brain, blood -brain barrier, barrier yeah. which was reproduced from Russia in 71 yeah. or something like that, yeah. he says it's the biggest experiment on on uh, living organisms or human beings ever. And, and here I have a document where it says stress yeah. is a very profitable market. Yeah. Uh, WHO said in 2004 or something that stress and depression will become the biggest causes for illness in 2020. Yeah. And now I think about the Danish government has a plan that is called 220 about health and so on. But you know, I've been trying to wake up people about the burnout and the stress and the depression because I have seen the rise coming together with the, um, all these new technologies coming on the market. I don't use mobile phone, I don't use the wireless. I'm not stressed unless I, I want to do too many things at the same time. But I'm not in a chronic stress situation. Most people are in a chronic stress situation due to the microwaves. Can, can you add to well, the <coughs> The, the blood-brain barrier, I mean, the, the people watching this may not understand what we're talking about. Um, there is, it, it's a bit like a fishing net around the brain. And it, it's full of holes, small holes. Uh, it has no joins. It's a very remarkable piece of netting. It has no joins. And it forms around the brain. It takes about a year and a half to form in a baby. But it, it isn't just around the brain. There are the, the same material is around some other organs in the body. And what it does, if we stick with the brain, what it does, it allows all of the things that have to come in and out of the brain, it allows the toxins, the poisons out, and it allows the good bits in into the brain. Uh, but it it keeps out the toxins outside in the blood, it stops them going into the brain and poisoning the brain. Now what happens is when microwaves come across this, it weakens it and the holes get bigger and they stay bigger. So now you have toxins in the body going into the brain and into other organs. Uh, and that can lead to as you say, all sorts of neurological and pathological diseases. Have you heard about chemtrails? The, the stuff they're spraying on the sky and so on? Oh yeah, chemtrails, And yeah. think about all the pollutants we have in this society and if yeah. you have an open blood-brain barrier, and what will happen to yeah. the brain? Well, I, I'm only, I think it was Dr. Carlo, uh, and I've met him once. He's, I believe he's giving evidence with me uh, in Oregon after Christmas. Uh, we met and gave a little talk in Great Ormond Street, the Children's Hospital on cancer, uh, a few years ago. He's a lovely gentleman. Um, he produced a paper, I believe, showing that about 40-50% of all illnesses in people today are caused deliberately by industry, yeah, or about 40-50% of all illnesses in the human race are deliberately caused from either the aeroplane or the car or drugs or food, whatever. Food, whatever. Yeah. I know a guy, he, he works with big companies like uh, 500, Fortune 500 and so on, mm -hmm. and he once told me that if I knew what was going on in the board meetings, I wouldn't believe this was on this planet. He said, it's so crazy what's going on, what they're discussing. They say, oh, we need to make a profit here. Mm. We need to make a diagnosis so people will be buying this pill we have invented. Yeah. You know, it, it's totally, people would not believe it. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It comes down to money, doesn't it? Yeah. It comes so we have God or, God or money, you know, you have to choose which way you go. <laughs> Uh, talking about cancer, I have this actually, this was where the blood brain barrier, there's a good uh, chapter about it. A book called Invisible Disease by Gunni Nordstrom. She's from Sweden but living in Finland now. But I have this bookmark I put in, and the Danish, 
We have this guy working, Christopher Johansson, at the Danish Cancer Register. He's also employed by the National Health Board, so he has two full-time jobs. And he's advising the telecom industry in Denmark as well, so he had all the hats as well, all in yeah. each color. But he said in the European Commission meeting in February 2009 in Brussels, everybody agrees that radio frequency is a tumor tumor promoter. Oh yeah, yeah. Why did he say that? He couldn't lie there because all the experts were present in Brussels. Mm. He, he said the truth there, but every time he said something in Denmark or comment on a study, he said, oh, it's perfectly safe. Yeah. That shows a lot about integrity and, and ethics. Mm. This, I think this is a, a trend you get in most countries. You have one person that declares they are an expert and the government scientists say we're referring to him. And this is a case in New Zealand. Um, in New Zealand you have a Dr. Black and he has decided and he's, he's said that uh, he is uh, on the payroll of the industry from the documents I've read. Uh, but all of the government, everybody, refers to this one man. And they say, well, if Dr. Black says this, then it's true. They ignore all of the rest of the world. And it's like that in several countries. They, they use one person uh, to refer to. Uh, and here, you know, it's just a handful of people here. Uh, when I saw the minister, and uh, the minister of schools, and I said, look at the devastation we are going to cause through all the children. And he said, I can do nothing. He said, the Health Protection Agency and the people that look after microwaves, is only a few people, they have the last word. He said, I can do nothing without their say-so. And they say, this is safe. Because somebody is telling them to say, this is safe. Yeah. And, and that's it. it, it's, you know, you, you have, the ordinary person is too busy, like you said yesterday, yeah. the ordinary person is too busy, worried about paying their bills, keeping their job, to take on the government and the most powerful industry on the planet. You can't do it. It's impossible to take them on. Okay, that actually just means, you know, I've been putting a lot of pressure on this guy and he doesn't want to meet me in Denmark. I asked for an interview with the Danish Cancer Institute. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Not meeting with me? And I said, why? Well, he doesn't dare. He's so dark. He's, you know, he's just, uh, he's ignorant actually because he doesn't know what he's doing, really, on a bigger level. Yeah. You have read, of course, the, the Reflex study. The Reflex. Yeah. Yeah, they, they actually came out, their conclusion was uh, DNA genetic damage. Yeah, significantly. Yeah. And um, I would say the advisor on that project was uh, Professor Ross Addy, who's now late, of course. Um, but he said, so, yeah. yeah, he said in the, in the preface, because he, he got to write the preface, yeah. he was too ill to, to, to come to the, when they published it. And it was also delayed two years to be published because of uh, the industry didn't like the results. But he wrote in the preface to this study exactly what you told yesterday about you wanted to do experimental uh, yeah. physics. You know, you wanted to, to test if you're yeah. uh, not theory, but you wanted to... Yeah, to, I could prove it. To prove it. Yeah. And he writes everything here that we need. Every time there comes someone who has a biophysical understanding, mm -hmm. how the body works, frequency, energy yeah. and everything, the door is shut, closed, and he said we should learn from the past now mm. and really step up to the next level because he says all new students they are just being controlled they don't really know what it's all about no, no and that's the reflex study yeah yeah i've read it i agree with it yeah